So the show and this specific uh, installation is uh, kind of a, a continuation of a live performance project I did uh, first with the Royal Danish Ballet in uh, Copenhagen and then later with uh, dancers from American Ballet Theatre. That uh, performance was called uh, Interpassivity. It's a term that was coined by uh, Robert Fowler and uh, Sisek. It's basically talking about delegating emotions and feelings, having other people or things experiencing feelings or emotions on your behalf while you might be doing something different. I got very interested in the idea of the hyper able body uh, uh, because I've been working a lot with the disabling the spectator or challenging the spectator's body and in this case we have a body which is super able but what we have done in this exhibition is we worked with um, having these bodies then being passive which is something that is very unusual for uh, I guess uh, a ballet dancer but then recoded and reactivated by impulsal electrical impulses Starting and not being a choreographer, being asked to do a ballet, I was thinking of different ways of how to work with movement and music. Choreography, or especially classical ballet, is a lot to do with merging movement and music to one. So I was thinking, how can you actually do that in very, very literally? I usually always work with what is there. And something that I noticed was that uh, when a dancer is not able to dance after an injury, they have all these different tools to get back in shape really quick. And one of the tools are uh, these tense pads that you put on your muscles and uh, get contractions so your muscle is being activated again and again and again uh, in this very quick rhythm. And I thought it was as a way to work with the dancer and the music and using this element that is used when a dancer is passive and not on stage. And so uh, I was thinking, what if we could use those pads and hack them so we could send music straight into the muscles of the dancers so they would be moved by electrical impulses but activated by the music, by a MIDI score. The music is uh, an old romantic uh, piano piece composed by uh, Favre, it's Opus 50, uh, Pavan. It's from 1888. I thought there was something beautiful in taking this old piece and then using this high tech uh, system to create the movements of the dancers, uh, which they probably have danced to several times in their practice uh, and then suddenly it's actually controlling uh, them directly. It's such a fetishized body of a ballet dancer. There was something interesting in um, having it being passive, reactivated, but then also uh, fracturing it. By using the LED, we're able to do uh, a sculptural film. We are also fracturing it, so we are fracturing the film but at the same time, that means we're also fracturing the bodies. So we have all these body parts that are kind of being uh, detached and then uh, are hard to place from one body to another. So in a way, we are raising the borders between different kind of uh, bodies and, and hopefully in that sense, um, expanding the category of, uh, of different kinds of body types. Another thing that was a big inspiration for the piece was uh, Haraway's uh, Cyborg Manifesto, which is talking about the whole idea of coming back to how to blur the borders between different kind of bodies to expand the categories. And I think that's also something that's interesting in, in relations to queer theory and, and um, something that in a way was the starting point of the project. Always when I do an exhibition, I'm very much interested in the movement of the spectator and uh, also the obstruction of the movement of the spectator. And 
I kind of uh, always uh, plan uh, the the movement very early on, and I see it a bit as as uh, a design of a garden, like maybe a old romantic English garden where you have a path and a view and then you go into a cave and then you have another view of something from somewhere else and then kind of create this by your movement you create uh, the narrative but also emotions and um, here we worked with these blocks uh, that also plays a bit of a fragmentation. Um, it becomes an obstacle and it becomes a guide. Uh, it also plays on the fragmentation uh, that we have in the films, but it's not one-to-one. -one. It's more like a, uh, trying to amplify what we have on the screen and, and uh, what we have physically in space. Somehow that it will stand and vibrate between the physical space and what is on the film. So it's not just representation, uh, light uh, on a wall, it's actually uh, the film becomes physical.